Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast um, and when I release this, this should be New Year's Day so Happy New Year to everyone. I have taken a little bit of time out, uh, pretty much all of December, this was kind of not my choice, it was and it wasn't a little bit. My work schedule actually did come down with the flu so I was quite bad with the flu and the weather, the weather's been hitty messy for me so I haven't been up to a great deal. That is until kind of the start of this week. I eventually started making my kitchen island or kind of a, it's more of a small breakfast bar but I did actually start doing that so I did get to cut some cool Japanese um, dovetails. Um, I have only cut the um, the tail portion, um, I'll put a picture on the screen um, and I have been using the beach. The beach has been a little bit problematic and I'm going to talk about that today in this podcast. So he has a little something that impressed me, um, I'm not sure when I actually saved this, uh, this is uh, from Instagram as usual and it was by Wood Review I think, Wood Review magazine. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, I'm not sure who the who the artist is or the or the commenter or the, the joiner, um, but he's actually taken um, an ingrained shaven with a chisel. Um, it looks to be some sort of uh, pain. So this almost looks like um, skin as he's as he's like slicing it it all it, what it reminded us of it reminded us of um, pva glue you know when you get pva glue on on your hands and you and you pull it off and you get quite a big clump of it that's what it kind of reminds us of obviously it's a different color but um it just goes to show you um i'm sure it's a japanese crafts uh, person and it just goes to show you how how sharp they get their tools i mean i personally don't think you need to have them that job but it's it's cool nonetheless so as i said i'm just going to talk about what i've been up to this week um basically the way the beach has been behaving um and say um, you know the trials and tribulations cutting these japanese style dovetails i didn't actually get as far as to cut the the male portion of the joint um that was because of well i have had snow in the northeast of england rain um but <laughs> in true david style i did actually put it to the side uh, and I started making one of those um, boxes again because I upgraded my solar system so I need to build a whole new box um, one of those slot together boxes what I've I've, I've shown you on Instagram and, and whatever um, if you want to check them out obviously there'll be links to everything um, in the description so yeah, I did take a little bit of time out and I started making that. The same again, I'm um, having trouble with uh, with the weller, but I kind of want to get this done. Um, obviously, because I do use I do use the lithium batteries to power certain things in my house. Um, I have been cooking with it, power in the fridge and whatnot. So um, the way the energy prices are at the moment, yeah, I'd rather get that done and get it sorted out. That should be finished, maybe tomorrow i hope um that's that's another issue i'm having as well because i mean by about 3 30 uh, maybe 4 4 p.m it's it's just too dark for me to work obviously me my eyesight's not great so i need good daylight <laughs> um i do really need to get um you know a, a real decent workshop sorting out I want to see hopefully in, in 2023 sometime, but who knows with me, I, I swap and change my mind so much. So before I forget, I am actually using um, a new microphone, so I've splashed out. Obviously, there's been a lot of people complaining about the audio, which is which is fair enough because I, I know it is bad, so I am trying. So I've got this microphone. Um, I am recording in one of the worst rooms possible. So if you can let us know what you think about this, obviously I'm going to find somewhere better to record. So I'd really appreciate some feedback on this little microphone. I digress back to the build. So when I was at the northeast of England woodworking show, I picked up a couple of pieces of um, spalted beach. I'll stick a picture of them up here. Um, and 
they're quite nice. I haven't really worked a great deal with anything spalted a little bit here and there, but nothing nothing like that. And I don't think I've ever worked with spalted beach. I have worked with beach um, quite a number of times, and I personally find beach is quite a hard, dense wood. So as you can imagine, I was quite surprised when I started working with a spalted beach. At first, I didn't really think too much of it because um, I had a, <laughs> I had quite an issue with uh, removing epoxy. I did actually yeah, get some epoxy to fill some. There was like you know some knots. There was a few splits and whatever else. So I decided to um, just get some regular chalk. This was blue chalk I chose. Um, I literally just scraped it into a dust, mixed it in with the epoxy, and put it on and let it dry. Yeah, um, it was quite messy. I'm not used to doing things like that, and I did make a bit of a mess here. Yeah, so there was all sorts, like kind of all over the place. Um, I must admit, I did have a right old job trying to get the excess epoxy off. I started off with me number four, freshly sharpened number four. It did take a good majority of it off. The first section, anyway, the first section of this um, of this epoxy. Um, it blunt me, it blunt me iron like super quick. Bearing in mind these are hot irons, so they are the do like the, the sharpness does stay longer with these. Um, it just blunt. It was really clogging up um, me me number four plane. So I went from that to a little apron plane, uh, and this is a bevel up. So that kind of worked for a little bit. That just like went dull straight away. I then moved on to um, a chisel, I tried a cord scraper, I tried the cabinet scraper. The cabinet scraper actually wasn't too bad, but same again, it just it just took the edge off, it just really blunted really quickly. So I ended up I ended up persevering with a chisel, trying to get as close as possible with a chisel. Yeah, and then with a cord scraper, that was kind of the best for me. I mean I've, ne I've never ever like done like a sort of a river table, so I haven't really used a lot of epoxy uh, in that sense. So the videos I have seen, they just use a sander, electric sander. So um, yeah, <laughs> I, I kind of done it the hard way. So kind of after I've done all that, um, I was like, sweet happy days um you know i can start cutting dovetails it's been so long since i've cut dovetails and obviously i'm getting to do a, a new variation what i haven't done i've done like a similar variation but this is um this is basically um this is a play on the last version i've done so i'll put a picture up here and the last the last one i've done was just out of pain and that was for a blanket chest uh, in my bedroom um, so the difference with these ones, I've actually I've actually got a, a V as as the tail portion itself. So um, I was like really looking forward to doing this. Um, <laughs> so as I started cutting, um, I kind of didn't I didn't like notice at first in the sense that I was kind of I was kind of cutting the 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 V's. Um, and I was thinking, some of this feels really soft, and I just kind of shook my head and just like carried on. I, I never really thought too much of it, and got a little bit further like, down the board. And obviously, it was very, very noticeable. I was like, oh, I, I, I don't like this, don't like this at all. So, moving all the way through the board, it, it was really weird because I was like, I was hitting like the like a brown orange portion of the board. Um, and it was quite hard and then I was and then I was meeting the the white portion um, and it was just so soft it was kind of a bit like cork that's that's the only thing I can like think of to describe it was like cork obviously not as soft as cork but that's the kind of the kind of texture I got from it um, I, ironically I did actually have a few people um, over over like a few social media platforms I actually did comment um, about the the hardness slash like softness of the um the spalted material um not necessarily beach but just spalted in general and um there was like a bit of a consensus where uh, is it kind of worth is it worth the effort i mean 
to look at it um again i'll put another picture of it just to look at it i think it's really really nice um you know just all the pattern in it and, and everything <clears throat> And that's before I get a finish on it, um, which which uh, I'm looking forward to do. So I'm going to be using Rebu uh, mono coat, so I'm really looking forward to that to see um, how good it is. Um, I'm seeing a lot of good things about it, and obviously the reason I want to use it is because it's one coat, done and dust, and that's that's what I like to do. After one coat, I, I just lose interest. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that say, you know, finishing is, is the best part of a, of a furniture project. Um, and I kind of will agree when you feel, when you first put the first coat on and it's like, wow, you know, it's, you know, when the grain starts popping and everything. And I really enjoy that. But after that first coat, it's like, I totally lose interest in it. And I'm just not interested one single bit. So I'm hoping that the mono coats, um, it's going to be the way forward for me. If I like it on this, I'm most probably going to use it exclusively. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to see what it's going to be like for its its wear and tear. But as I said, if I put it on this this beach and I like it, that's going to be the way forward for me. Just solely because I'm lazy. But um, hopefully that that works out. So one of the problems I was having when I was actually cutting the tails was the beach was just so easy to damage. Um, I actually did lose a couple of sections as I was cutting it. There was a couple of splits I didn't notice, um, and the the white the white sections of the beach. Um, I'm not actually sure of the terminology, but those those were like the weakest parts. Uh, you know, the most fragile. And I did actually knock a couple of them, and they just like fell off. I was very very lucky to actually find them and <laughs> and to be able to su uh, super glue them back on. I forgot to mention the marking out as well. <laughs> The, the the marking out was um was very confusing for us um I, I get confused um at the best of times but this like really really confused us the first edge that I started marking out uh, I was just so so confused I was kind of working out the spacing as well um I did kind of get the spacing that I wanted uh, but even after that I, I messed up about three four times um so. Yeah, can be a little bit of uh, a little bit frustrating with that. Um, so what I ended up doing with um, the V section, uh, the V section itself, those the, the two arms, if you will, those are half an inch. And then I measured four millimeters, so that would be tw twelve millimeters for the two arms, four millimeters. Um, then I measured eight millimeters, and that's for the two the two finger joint sections if you will if if you can call it that um, and then another four millimeters so that was a space and I chose <clears throat> um, and I did actually go 70 degrees I never ever go 70 degrees um, I'm really sold on 80 degrees for dovetails I just think like 80 degrees is a good all-rounder so the reason I went for 70 degrees with the Japanese dovetails I actually just done it purely for aesthetics um, appearance. I'm glad I went with the 70 degrees. They look really good in my opinion anyway. Another problem that I faced uh, as I worked through the board was while I was cutting the knife valley. So when you're cutting dovetails or, or, or quite a, a lot of other joints, you've got a shoulder line. So with the shoulder line, what I like to do is create the shoulder line with uh, a knife or a cutting gauge um, and this gives you a definitive edge um, you know it's really really good you get really good results anybody that's still using a pencil um, I'd highly recommend that you move over to the creating um, a knife wall so when I was creating the knife wall um, and obviously creating a knife valley so for those of you that don't know create the create the score going across across the fibers and that severs the fibers um, and then you get a chisel and you create a little valley 
Um, and this is so your chisel has got somewhere to go when you start removing the material it's just a it's a nice edge for it to register against and as I said you get really good results with it so the problem I had with this was that there was different density um, going throughout the board so I started at this end and I was maybe hitting the, the chisel twice so one two moving it one two moving it one two and i was coming across the board that way so what i didn't anticipate at first was when i went from the brown section of the wood to the white section of the wood when i hit one two i took it a bit too far i was i was really really lucky um and i didn't i didn't do any damage but the damage could have been so easily done that way ironically some some of the some of the the white and material of the board some of it was really really soft and then some of it was like not so soft if that makes sense so i did actually have to end up coming back to certain sh shoulder lines and actually giving it a little bit more of a tap um that was a bit uh, it was a bit annoying because i had it i couldn't i couldn't rush it well not rush it but i couldn't do it to me normal speed um the same the same as this this table so the, the table in front of us this is actually dovetailed all down the corners um and i work with oak a lot so i know how it behaves etc etc but if i was to be doing the same thing with this table or, or all i'm making this table i could pretty much go one two all the way along um, all the way along the shoulder line um, you know and it, it would be near enough the same result every time so after two taps of the, uh, of the mallet you know that would be enough to take it close enough um, to where I can just flick it up with my thumb and I've got the I've got the the knife valley created but doing it with the beach it was just I, I kind of say it wasn't it wasn't a nightmare but it, it was a little bit frustrating shall we say as I said before, there was <laughs> there was multiple damage <laughs> um, as as I was cutting these. Um, there was quite a bit of damage um, as I was removing the waste um, in between the tail section. So in between the tail section, the method I like to use is to use a coat and saw, take it pretty close to me me knife valley, and then afterwards i finish up with a chisel and that's how i do it i find that nice and quick um and i've been doing that for quite a few years now so as i was removing some of the material um i did again i had i had multiple sections of the white portions of the board <laughs> some of them just dropped out again i was so so lucky to be able to spot where they were and to glue them back into place yeah so that was pretty annoying as well um i think at that point <laughs> i kind of thought to myself i'm really glad i'm just using two boards um and i'm only doing one one section of dovetail um because i was actually considering to do um the the opposite side so it would pretty much look like this table but just a bigger version of it with dovetails at this corner and dovetails at that corner but i'm kind of leaning away from using the other corner now just for how problematic these have been one of the things i did do when i was marking out for the dovetails on these is that i actually left a little bit of extra room in between the um the two arms or the v so i had the two the, the v and you've got the the, the finger joint in them where, where you would have the pin so i actually left a little bit more room and that was solely to get me pencil in um aesthetically probably in my my view it would have been better if they were a little closer to get up but i think it still does look good um but with the added bonus i'm actually able to get me me pencil in and that's and that's the reason if you look at the picture on here that's the reason why there's like a four mil gap it's just solely to get me pencil in so should i have done the pins first um i know there's quite a lot of woodwork as that just for regular dovetails they'll actually cut the pins first and then 
and then they'll cut the tails. I don't like to do that. I personally think you get better results. I'm not going to go into why because I've already spoke about this several times. However, with the likes of these Japanese dovetails, common sense, or at least, or at least my logic and my brain tells us that it's better to do the pins first, which makes it makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because there is a lot happening on on the end grain. So I have actually done this, not with this one, but I have actually done this in the past day uh, with a blanket chest. Um, I'll put a picture of it up. I don't know if you'll be able to see the dovetails, but I did actually try tails first and I thought, yeah, but it was difficult because I was struggling to get the pencil in. So then I moved to pins first. Um, <laughs> and I kind of... I thought, mm, yeah, it wasn't. It was a lot easier to mark out. I, I must say, it was it was loads easier to mark out. Um, the results weren't too bad, so I decided to do pins again. Um, I struggled with it totally, botched it up. Um, it was okay. I did. I didn't. I did. I was able to fix it. Um, and then the very last corner. I decided to do um, tails first and it, it turned out perfectly fine. So I've decided on this one to do the tails first. Uh, I'm going to stick with that. And as I said, that was one of the reasons that I left um, left a bit more of a gap in between the pin section. So I do actually have a few concerns um, about actually fitting these dovetails. Um, one of the one of the concerns I've got is that how how I fit dovetails. I'll actually I try to get them straight off the saw. That's what I've I've been doing that for a lot of years now. I try to get all my dovetails straight off the saw. I don't like to pay it down. Obviously, sometimes I've got to, but I don't like to pay it down. I like to just straight off the saw, and I like to get them a nice tight fit. So. <laughs> The problem being with the beach is that some of the boards so fragile. I don't, I don't know if it's if it's going to take that compression. And if I try and like only leave like you know maybe you know maybe point like three of a of a millimeter of of the line pencil line that is, um, how am I going to be accurate enough to do that? Um, obviously working with oak I just leave the pencil on the pencil line on just basically cut to the pencil line and I 9 out of 10 touch wood I normally get really really good results with that but as I said with the beach it could be a little bit problematic um, I did have someone comment um, and what did they say um, I think they were like interested to see how the dovetails themselves were going to hold up I don't think there's going to be a problem at all with the dovetails holding up once the together and once the glued. I think they're going to be quite strong, even though the board itself, certain portions of the board are weak. Um, I really think it'll be fine once it's fitted and glued. But <laughs> as I said, getting it to that point, I think it's going to be really problematic, um, and I'm really not looking forward to it. Okay, guys, so that's it for this week. Um, again, a very happy new year to everyone, and I wish you all the best for the new year. And until the next time, I shall see and speak to you guys later.